Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to try out POP OS. This is an Ubuntu based Linux distro that many of you have been asking me to investigate for some time. So let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we are on the website for System76, who are a computer manufacturer who also publish Pop! OS, which they describe as an operating system for STEM and creative professionals who use their computer as a tool to discover and create. If we click on download, you'll see everything is very nicely presented, and there are two versions of Pop! OS. There's the most recent version, which is Pop! OS 2010, which is based on Ubuntu 2010 from October 2020. But there's also Pop! OS 20.04 LTS, which is based on Ubuntu 20.04 from April 2020, and which has long-term support until April 2025. We can also see down here the system requirements. We need two gigabytes of memory, 16 gigabytes of space on our drive, and a 64-bit processor. And then, very helpfully, for each of the currently available versions of Pop! OS, we can download one of two ISO files. The standard one here, but also one with NVIDIA graphics drivers pre-installed. And this, I think, is a very nice touch. That's very helpful for people who've got an NVIDIA graphics card in their computer. However, in this test, I'm installing on a system with onboard Intel graphics, so I'm going to select Pop! OS 2010 and download the standard ISO file. And uh, there we are, we will save the thing like that. It's a 2.25 gigabyte download, and once complete, I will run up Melena Etcher. Here we are, select the uh, ISO file, there it is. And I've also already selected a USB drive I plugged into the uh, laptop, we've got that as well. And we'll click on Flash and accept the Windows warning to write ourselves a bootable Pop! OS USB drive. Right, I've now plugged the USB drive into the Odyssey X86 J4105, which we're using as our test hardware. And if I turn it on, I've got it set to boot from USB. And here we are, it's saying we can try or install Pop! OS. So uh, let's see what happens. This is the first time I've tried this. It's supposed to be a very good installed experience with Pop! OS. We will see. And here we are, things are happening. We need to select a language. I'll go for English, and I'll go for United Kingdom, and we'll go for English UK. Nice graphics on the screen here, aren't they? Very nicely presented. Default keyboard will be fine. And all we now get three options. We've got try demo mode. We could try it out running from a USB drive. That would not change anything on your computer. That's safe if you wish to just experiment with Pop! OS. But if you want to install, we've got custom install, or we've got an option here for clean install, erase everything. And that's what I'm going to do. The system here has currently got, I think, OpenSUSE on the SSD, so we'll replace that with a clean install with a Pop! OS. So let's just see how clean an install that actually will be. And there we are, we'll select the drive, that's nice and straightforward. Erase install, I do like this compared to uh, many Linux systems. And now, as you can see, it's offering us drive encryption, which is the default here in Pop! OS. It's a nice, secure distro. So I'll run with that. I really do like these graphics, and I'll choose a password. There we are, I mustn't forget that, and we'll set the encryption password. And there we are, in a very straightforward fashion, Pop! OS has been installed. So, We'll now restart the computer, and I'll remove my USB drive, like that. And the system, when booted up, will now ask us to unlock our encrypted disk, so I hope I can remember the password like that. Looks like I can. And we've arrived in Pop! OS, where we've got a few extra things just to go through as we set things up. I select my keyboard layout. English UK is already selected, that is fine. I'm going to skip the Wi-Fi network because we're connected via Ethernet. Uh, location services, never turn them on, ever. Time zone, it's picked up OK. Collect online accounts, you must be joking. And about me, we're just now going to enter a username. 
and of course set up a password. It doesn't like that very much, but I think that'll be fine. And there we are, all done. We can start using POP OS. And as usual, what I'm going to do now is a little bit of setup to make things read better on video, and then I'll come back and we'll take a look around. Greetings. Here we are back in POP OS, which with its GNOME desktop will be very familiar to anybody who's used Ubuntu. With, for example, up here a top right menu, which gives us access to things like settings, as well as the options to power off and log out from the computer. And then top left, we have activities. If we click on that, we get to the dock, which is not permanently on the screen as it is by default in Ubuntu. We get to the dock by clicking on activities with the mouse, or we can get to activities by pressing the Windows key on the keyboard, which is known as the super key here in Linux. So if I press the Windows key, the super key, we can toggle activities on and off. So let's just launch a few applications to uh, show how things are working. We'll launch the uh, top favorite there, which is Firefox, which gets us to the world's favorite website. And we can also launch maybe, I don't know, we'll launch the uh, file manager like that. Nice little file manager here in Pop OS. And we've also, maybe we should launch, I don't know, let's launch LibreOffice Writer. We always seem to launch a processor, always seems a good idea. And uh, there we are, yes, we've got a LibreOffice Writer running. So what I've shown you here is hardly extraordinary. We can do this sort of thing in uh, any operating system these days, but I wanted to show it you because there are other ways of managing your Windows, your workflow here in Pop OS. So if we close these down, I'm going to go up here to this little menu where we can turn on tile windows. And nothing seems to happen straight away, but if I now launch Firefox, it'll come up pretty much as it did before, but it'll fill almost all of the screen other than the border around the edge. And if we now launch, for example, as well, the file manager, we'll duplicate what we did before. This is now going to tile automatically on the screen, as you can see, and if we also launch Let's do exactly the same things for a consistent test. I know some of you like that. We'll launch a LibreOffice Writer, and again, it'll find itself, hopefully, the second a tile at the bottom there of the screen. If we want to go back to a normal display, we can hold down the super key and press Y and toggle back to that and then toggle back to the tiles if we want them. And if we want to be clear which of these windows has got the focus, there is a control for that. We go back up to the menu. You can see we've got a show active hint option. We turn that on, then the active window has got a little orange border. Although as you probably saw in the menu, you can change the color if you want to. And you can also change the gap between the windows. Let's just try that. This works interactively in real time. Everything here seems to be very nicely implemented in Pop OS. And uh, just to prove that, let's for example, turn off the file manager there, close it down. And again, space reallocates itself automatically. Everything is, is very fluid. We can move between applications using obviously clicking between them. We've also got the standard alt tab functionality if we want to use it. But on top of that, we've also got a launcher. If I use super and forward slash, we bring up a launcher and you can see we can move between applications using the arrow keys. And of course here in the launcher, we can launch applications. That's why it's a launcher. We could do, for example, a Libra, let's bring up LibreOffice Calc as well as LibreOffice Writer, and it will come up in another tile. This said, I'm sure some of you are thinking you're going to run out of screen estate tiling windows like this pretty quickly, and you are. And I must admit, I personally wouldn't run a tiled window setup like this, but there are other things you can do. For example, we can use the stacker. So if I go up here to this window and I press super and S, it gives it a little tab at the top. And it's clearer to see what's going on if we go down to another window and I use super and enter, and then the arrow key, to put those two together in the same stack. So we've got two windows there working on tabs in what they call a stack. And we could also put LibreOffice Writer there as well if we wanted to, super and enter again, this time the cross arrow like that. And again, we've got them all working in the same window. So that's just another way of handling Windows and workflow here in Pop OS. And as you probably gathered here in Pop OS, using the keyboard is a big thing. And I, and I like that. I like the ability to do things with keyboard shortcuts. And if you want to know what all the keyboard shortcuts are, you can go down to view all here, another window will open up, and here we can see all the keyboard shortcuts that we can use in what they call the pop shell.
Something else that's really well implemented here in Pop! OS is the graphical application installer. And this is sitting here on the dock down there. Look, it's called Pop Shop, so let's run it up. And what Pop Shop does is to combine both Deb and Flatpak software libraries in a single installer, rather than relying on Snap and the Ubuntu repositories. For those unfamiliar with Linux, this simply means we've got lots of choice when we're installing software. Everything is very nicely presented in categories here, or you can search for applications using the search box. And for seasoned Linux users, it just means we've got a bit more choice when installing applications, because in many instances, let's just take this as an example, you will find we've got both Deb and Flatpak options available in the installer. So let's install something here in the Pop Shop. What we should go for, the GNU image manipulation program. There we are, GIMP is sitting down there. Got to have GIMP on the system, haven't you? There we are, and we'll just click on Install for GIMP. And there we are, it's finished, so we'll close down Pop Shop, and hopefully we'll find, if the world is with us, which it really should be, GIMP is now on the system. There it is, so we'll run it up. Always good to see GIMP loading on the system. Rather have it maximised, what's that super M like that, there we are. And we're now all suitably equipped for lots of cool image manipulation. Now, Whilst Pop! OS has got some fantastic features, there are also a few notable omissions. Most obviously, on the windows in Pop! OS, we have a control to close the window, but we don't have controls to maximise or minimise a window. And there is a keyboard shortcut for maximisation, which is Super M, which toggles like that, as you can see, but there isn't a keyboard shortcut for minimising. And you might say, not a problem, go to the top of the window and right click and minimise like that, which is fine, that works, except it doesn't for a program like Firefox, where if you right click the top of a window, you get the program's own control menu, not a window control menu. And as far as I can see, there is no means whatsoever to minimise a program like Firefox in Pop! OS. And I'm sure some people are typing in the comments, it's not a problem, Chris, you can install GNOME extensions to put back in the controls that have been taken out. But you really shouldn't have to put back in such basic controls, not least in an operating system which is so well thought out in other respects. Something else I have a problem with here is the width of the scroll bars in Pop! OS. And admittedly, this is not just a Pop! OS issue, but the scroll bars here are very fiddly to use indeed. And this really should be fixable. It should be possible to go to settings here and to go to accessibility, and there should be a setting here to change the width of a scroll bar. And there isn't. And yet, in a distro like Linux Mint, there is a scroll bar width setting, and it's very useful indeed. I'd also note that in this video, I've been using a very small mouse pointer on the screen, and that is weird because the cursor size here is set to the largest possible. Except it doesn't matter what size of cursor you select in Pop! OS, because you always get a small one. A final thing I'd point out is under Appearance, and under Appearance like that in Pop! OS, we've got very little to control. We've got light and dark, which is cool, but unlike in Ubuntu, you haven't got a toggle to auto-hide the dock, or indeed to have the dock permanently on the screen. And this is a bit weird because it means in Pop! OS, to actually launch a program, you have to bring up activities either with the mouse or with the super key, and then select your program down there. And of course, sometimes you have to go to show all applications, and then sometimes even inside a, a folder and launch an application like that. And the implication of this is that it takes more mouse clicks or keyboard shortcuts to launch an application in Pop! OS than it does in other Linux distros. And this is very weird for an operating system that has a strong focus on workflow optimization. Pop! OS is one of those Linux distros that's got almost a cult-like following. And having been trying it out for a few days to make this video, I can totally understand why. Pop! OS has got a very distinctive, a very nice look and feel, and the workflow tools are, I'm sure, something that many users would find very useful indeed. This said, I'm not one of those users. I like to run applications full screen and flip between them without tabs. So I don't like all that tiling stuff going on. And therefore, for me, my go-to Linux distro will remain Linux Mint, with Ubuntu a close second. 
This said, if you like the sort of features you've seen in this video, it's well worth checking out Pop OS. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.